Uh, you know, I've lived in this valley all my life. Down underneath that cloud bank is the entire Silicon Valley. You don't see it sometimes in the mornings. This is actually a summertime shot. And it's easy to imagine this as being something other than what it is. And this is what it was long time ago. This picture is from the 40s, and it was all farmland here. This area was one of the premier fruit growing areas in the world, and now it's almost entirely developed. And one of the sad things I really find is that the few areas where there are fruit trees still growing, many, I hate to say most, but probably true, most of my clients don't even hardly harvest the fruit. It goes to waste and the development continues. I see so much, every single little bit of new available woodland is being turned into something buildable. This, uh, this piece of woodland right here is on its way to being decimated. And, and the irony of it is <laughs> this is in a prime location. So this is prime expensive real estate. And it's right down in Las Gatis. And <laughs> the developer has the audacity to put the title Oaks in the title of his development. Look what he's doing to the oaks. There's another property that I was at yesterday, and it too is in the process of being developed. I have no idea what's going in here. Maybe a home, maybe a barn, maybe something. But, you know, the, the equipment that goes in and decimates the topsoil changes things permanently for ever, really, you know, because it's not going to go back to the way it was unless there's total devastation of all people. And I suppose that could happen. But, you know, some of these beautiful oak woodlands, like, like look at this beautiful area right here. This is undisturbed. And it should be left entirely alone. And, and this is, you know, there's a fence around this part of the property, but it, it's not... It's not altered much. Oh, this is a magnificent tree. This tree is really, really old. I'm guessing three or 400 years old. It, it's a coast live oak. There's a, another tree. This is a valley oak, and this is an area that should be left alone. It should have been undisturbed. But you can see there's a bridge that goes across here, and that's a fairly new addition to this property. So. Oh, this is interesting. Do you see those aerial roots right there? They didn't used to be up in the air. They were all in the ground. So the developments have altered the water courses and created a small runoff down here that have washed up the roots. So because the cities have their requirements for the developers to mitigate silt runoff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, they have all their rules in place on how to develop a property. But you know, they say they protect the trees, but they really don't. They, they really don't. You know, the developers, they don't give a damn. All they want to do is profit off of, of what they're doing. And the people that are dreaming of their new home or, or development or whatever they want to do, it's, it's all about the money. It's all about the cash. And there's very little regard to how we are permanently scarring our landscape. And as people move in and continually change you know, the soil situation and, and the micro environment. We, we don't realize, or I realize, but most people don't realize the damage that they do. And because it takes a long time for a tree to die after it's impacted the way it is, people believe that they got away with it. Now, here's a, something kind of interesting. You see where the, old, or the new road is. You can see there's a rise there of about four feet of dirt. So this particular tree now has four feet of dirt on top of its root system. So the, the soil here is being squeezed out. You know, the, the, the whole environment is going to cause that tree to go downhill. There's a tree that has listed. I don't know if that was because of the, uh, the alteration in the, the water flow. I'm guessing that it was. The water flowed through there and there was no longer stabilization. I, you know, I, I see a lot in some of these areas, and I see that this was, at one time, an old property. 
who knows what kind of a farm or ranch or something was up here. I found this old scooter. I don't know if this was purchased at an antique store and placed out here as a memory of what once was, but the irony of it, you know, was was very real to me. And the people that live on this estate property like the idea of mushrooms. They like the beauty of the mushrooms. So they've got all these faux mushrooms on the property, which are kind of cute, they're kind of pretty, but they don't realize the natural growth, the natural uh, micro growth that's happening. And because we've recently had some rains up here, in walking on this property, my son and I were finding new mushrooms popping up everywhere. It, it was just, it was remarkable. Here's a, a tree that we went up. I've been inspecting this for years, and sadly, there's a big decay pocket up underneath. This is that tree that's three or 400 years old, and you can see evidence of an old farm property or ranch property. Who knows what was here before? Maybe this is where they fenced in the cattle or the horses. You know, Kalen found a bit of hinge that's on the ground and still up on the tree. And this tree has been worked on so much, but, but the work that was done on this tree is probably 50 or 60 years old. There are posts that are supporting the branches. There's, there's nails and hooks and all kinds of stuff in this tree. And, and sometimes I see an old tree like this and I try to envision, I try to imagine what used to be here. I do know that there used to be a, an old, um, uh, it, it was a, a convent or of some sort. It was a big area that, that was, was owned by the Catholic Church and and so they probably were the ones that spent the money putting these poles in here to support the tree. And in all honesty, if these supports weren't there, this tree would have fallen apart years and years ago. Because this is up in a no man's land, undisturbed part of the property, and nobody's going to build or, or really even you know, hang out under this tree much. Except for us tree guys, of course. <laughs> This whole tree is full of cables. I think there's about eight or nine cables up there. Look at that. If you can see clearly, that's a lion's mane fungus growing out of that old wound. And there's a better overview. The pictures just don't do this justice. The, the spread of this tree is easily 100 feet wide. Massive big trunk. And we were walking along, and, and Kalen spotted another interesting bit of mycorrhizal activity. All that white that you see in there is some sort of fungus completely dissolving the wood. And I like to talk a lot about how important fungus is to our environment. Without fungus to break down wood and plant life, we would not have good topsoil. So I, I'm not sure what kind of mushrooms these are, but you know, we were just out looking at them and everywhere we looked, mushrooms are popping up. It was really, really amazing to see that. And, uh, unfortunately, the people that live here, they don't really get out and see the property the way we do. They see <laughs> they see faux mushrooms in their front yard, and they're pretty, and they're there year-round. But we see the real thing. We see the, the, the soil. We see, and, and the soil in this particular property is perfect. You know, they, they don't blow away all the, the mulch. They leave it, and, and the gardener that's on this property is doing a, a really good job of maintaining the natural buildup. So many of my properties, the gardeners blow all this stuff away. So in a way, I mean, look at that. I, I found some chanterelles. Those are the, the California chanterelles. I, uh, I found four of them. Actually, Kalen and I were out walking. He spotted them. We dug them up and he allowed me to have those for dinner that, that night. It was, it was amazing. You can see the, the gill structure if they were regular, perfectly straight up and down, it would not be a chanterelle, but you can see how they kind of merge together and you can see the coloration. Uh, a chanterelle is actually pretty easy to identify and they are delicious. So uh, finally, we, uh, in walking around, we spotted this big oak tree uh, looking over the fence and I saw this is on the neighbor's property and they probably don't even realize this but there's a huge area of decay at the base of it. And I looked at it because when this tree self-destructs, look at that fungus up there, when this tree fails, it will likely fall onto this property. And 
On the positive side, there's just a fence and a few other small trees, so the, the devastation that this tree is going to cause someday, um, it, it won't be the end of the world, so I, I don't even know if I ought to alert these people and say, you know, hey, you've got a problem, because if I bring it to their attention, they'll say, oh, no, we have to cut this tree down. And who knows, this tree could live on like this in this state of horrible devastation to be, it could live like this for another decade or more. Yeah, you know, irony, it, it's amazing. Trees always amazing. Live back there, or it don't could even fall know. down tomorrow. Look at the size Who of knows? This thing. But on the flip side of that, when you have a tree that is over a structure or over an area where it is being um, used, you have to look at the target. And further down the road, I spotted this big area of excessive decay. And I want you to look at that target. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy my videos and please subscribe.